but not just a museum, because your dream as, as well as my dream, I think, is probably to have a communication centre. Thank you very much for coming today. Um, just before I introduce our guest opener this morning, I just wanted to say thank you to all the very many people who've actually contributed to getting this, this exhibition going today on the green, in the village hall and in the church. Uh, I could go through all the names, but my mind, my memory goes these days and I can't remember at all. But I just wanted to say that 60, uh, 60 years after the first radio broadcast, back in 1982, I was sitting in exactly the same position as I am today, uh, and I was surrounded by the greater the good of Essex as it was. We had Sir Robert Telford from Mount Hemis. We had Douglas Speed. We had David Kelly from South End, and we had Lady Platt as well. And many of you probably don't even remember those people today. They were all there, and they've all been forgotten today. So the most important thing, I think, to, to remember is that Dave Monk is known to you all. Dave Monk will be remembered 40 years hence. <laughs> <laughs> and he joined school much later than I do, he's a much younger man. And, and so I'll call upon him now to uh, formally open this exhibition and this Marconi centenary celebration. David. Thank you very much indeed. That's absolutely lovely. My wife didn't uh, actually remember me this morning when we got up, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you. Uh, it, it really is lovely to be here. And I look around the room and I see such knowledge and such enthusiasm and a guide dog puppy. Uh, who's absolutely lovely and will remember this for the rest of us. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's so brilliant, the work you do, uh, to keep this legacy of ours alive. And I've actually made some notes here, and, and I can't remember what I was going to say. Hang on. <laughs> no, still can't remember. <laughs> but no, it is. I'm, I'm a Chelsea boy, so obviously I've grown up with Marconi's around me. Um, a lot of the people I knew at school worked at Marconi's. Um, Marconi's was the most important place in the town, you know, along with Hoffman's and the others. But Marconi played such a part. And uh, when I left the grammar school, I was going to be a lawyer. Um, and so I, I became a solicitor. But deep down inside, that Marconi feel was there. The, the, the communication feel that I think we all grew up with in Chelmsford. And ironically, I've had a 35, nearly 36 year career at the BBC. So um, it's, it's appropriate, I think, that I'm here and with you today. Um, how do we get the younger generation interested in this? I was so pleased to see the planes and the, the, the battery setups and so on, because that's the future, isn't it? That's what we've got to do. We've got to infuse young people, which is why I still have this sort of dream that there is going to be a Marconi Museum, and I was just talking about that over there. Um, it, at some point in the future, a Marconi Museum. But not just a museum, because your dream as, as well as my dream, I think, is probably to have a communication centre of some sort with all the Marconi legacy that you have looked after, pulled together, talked about, enthused about over the years, but also marry it with the future and the way communications is going in the future. Because without all the stuff that's in this room, and without all the, the incredible ingenuity, inventiveness of those pioneers a hundred years ago, not only would we not have inform, educate, and entertain, and then of course the BBC, coming on stream later on this year, 100 years ago. But we wouldn't have all the communications we've got that's telling us the truth about what's happening in the world today. And I think that's what young people need to be taught, that it is the communications that 
were started here, now enable us to know what's going on in the world, to know the truth of what's going on. There are the downsides of the communication system that we have, but I don't know about you, but I think that the kit, if you like, has always been slightly ahead of us as humans. And we've all, we've always had to catch up with what's going on, like social media at the moment. Fantastic, but we as human beings have got to catch up with it and learn to use it properly. John said, could you just say a couple of words? <laughs> and I'm sorry, but I do, I do enthuse about this because I think Chelmsford and Essex is so missing a trick on what you do that I will keep trying to push for this to come about. Whether it'll happen, I don't know. But we can only try, can't we? It is my great pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> to... Oh, sorry. Uh, that's nothing. No, no. <laughs> um, it is my great pleasure to take the pair of scissors yes. and <laughs> cut this ribbon and inaugurate... Oh, what am I doing? Just open. Oh, <laughs> and, and open the hundredth, the centenary exhibition of Riddle and its place in the world as the hub of communication. Ray. 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 <laughs> One person to whom we owe a great deal of this legacy which you're referring to is, is Tim Wander. And Tim, as you know, is, he certainly is, and he certainly thinks he is, and the foremost authority <laughs> on Marconi, on radio, and anyone who's heard him knows just exactly how extensive his, his knowledge is on this matter. And I think he'd like to make a very small presentation to you of all these things so that you don't forget what it is all about. Forget that. Hello, Dave. <laughs> Last time I saw Dave was the 95th anniversary of Rift 20 yes. in the hut. Yes. And we couldn't put together the 100th because the BBC That's, that's another question. question. Yes. Um, look, I custom as I am with public speaking, and it's a fact that I overran on Tuesday night. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, I understand by two hours, one of my colleagues. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that was penance for Matt. Oh, so we're not going to make yes. you easy. Oh, no, no, we can't go there. Um, well, Dave and I have known each other, usually by telephones, videos, well, for yeah. many, many, many years. In fact, I was actually there when the Down Radio station opened. Not this one, but the other one. Yeah. Um, over the years, I've documented to MT. We were very, very pleased to have two of Peter Eccles' granddaughters with us for most of Tuesday. And for me, after 38 years, a real thrill to have Alison and Caroline in the original hut. Wow. First Eccles' 100 years picket on microphone. It was really quite something. Um, and then in the audience for the Tuesday night. And uh, without no ado, it all, 100 years ago, it started here. And it continued to grow into the monster the BBC is today. And, I'd uh, agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's me trying to get a series option on Peter Eckers' life. But um, as you probably heard, um, despite the fact there are two previous books, this is the culmination of 38 years research. I'm in the corner signing copies, that's the plug. But I bought Dave a copy because oh. his memory is not what it used to be. <laughs> <laughs> It's got lots of colour pictures as well, just for my friends. <laughs> <laughs> I like pictures.